You saw the useless facts. They were useless. Well, now I have 77 useful facts with one for every brawler, and they are pretty useful. Let's get into this. Shelly takes 34 projectiles from her regular attack or 70 projectiles from her super to entirely fill a hypercharge. With Hyper Bear, Bruce attacks every 0.24 seconds. With the Pet Power Gear, Bruce deals 1000 damage assuming Nita is maxed. So, with both of those abilities active, Bruce can single-handedly destroy a high save in 19.2 seconds. Even though Cold Super can break walls, doing so does consume the projectile that breaks it. This can limit the damage Cold Super deals while attacking through walls, but this luckily is never the case for Silver Bullet. With the supercharge gear, Bull needs to take roughly 22,000 damage to fill his super completely. If he wanted to fill his entire hypercharge by just taking damage, it would take about 63,600 damage. With rocket number 4 active, Brock will deal an additional 3,712 damage if he spams all of his ammo on a stationary target. Meanwhile, he'd only do 2,080 extra damage if he used a super on a stationary target with more rockets. I'm not calling this star power bad by the way, these are literally just random facts. If he has the damage gear and El Fuego active, one El Primo Super will deal 3,992 damage. Although this isn't enough to fully eliminate any max brawlers, this can still make a large amount of brawlers very weak. If Barley is up close and centers his super over a stationary target, he can actually damage the target 5 times instead of 4 due to the delay between the 1st and 5th bottle landing. Although Protective Tunes can protect Poco from slows, poison, and even a Frank Super, this gadget cannot remove a bell mark from him or his allies. The defensive buffs from Rosa's Hypercharge and Super do not stack. The protection just peaks at 70%. Either way, if a Max Rosa uses her Super at full health, she essentially has 33,333 health for the next few seconds. Although Jessie's damage is reduced after each bounce, her supercharge per hit does not decrease after her attacks bounce. This enables Jessie to fill her super in just two attacks if she gets the full value out of each of them. Each stick of dynamite from Dynamite's fidget spinner gadget does 2,400 damage and there's 20 of them. So if Dynamite got really lucky, he could technically deal 48,000 damage in one gadget. If a hypercharged Dynamite hit an enemy with the center barrel and the entire cluster bomb, he would deal 25,500 damage. If Tick uses well-oiled and the health gear, he can fully replenish his health in about 5.1 seconds. To put the perspective, he reloads every 2.4 seconds, so you can heal faster than you can fill your ammo. If 8-Bit has the damage gear, boosted booster, and extra credits, he will deal 53,856 damage in 3 attacks. This only counts for 51 of the possible 54 projectiles, and I believe it's simply because one projectile from each burst of 18 just doesn't register. Either way, this number accounts for 67% of a heist saves health. If you're in a tight area and looking to do some heavy damage, Rico's super is actually not the greatest source. While it does 11,712 damage off of a bounce, his multi-ball launcher gadget can deal 16,384 damage if all projectiles hit. This can one-shot any brawler in the current moment. If you're using Rolling Reload for Daryl, you can reload a total of 5.5 ammo throughout the duration of the reload buff. This is, of course, 2.7 additional ammo, which equates to about 12,960 additional damage if it was evenly distributed. Penny's trusty spyglass gadget claims to blast every visible enemy, but actually it stops after firing like 20 times. Wait, is this fact useful? I don't know, but... It's just the same case for Vengeful Spirits. If you spend the entire 3 seconds of Carl's super in contact with an enemy, it will deal a total of 12,000 damage and charge his super enough that it will only take one contact of his regular attack to completely fill it back up. Jackie's counter crush has an ever so slightly larger range than her regular attack. This allows you to damage enemies a very slight bit even if you still can't reach them with your real attack. After 10 spirits are dropped on the ground at once, they will vanish as the next ones appear. This unfortunately does mean that Cookie Popper's damage potential is limited to 18,000. This one's somewhat basic, but if Bo is standing in his totem's range while his mines blow someone up, he does gain an additional supercharge. His positioning when he launches the mines does not matter. 
With Bad Karma, if an enemy remains in a Max Emsis Stinky Spray for the full duration, it will deal a total of 3,900 damage, which is an additional 780 damage added just by the star power. If you auto aim Stu Super, it will actually dash you in the direction that the blue joystick is aiming if you are in movement when you tap the yellow button. If she's at max range and spams her attacks, Piper will actually do more damage with the snappy sniping star power. Granted, the initial burst is greater for ambush, but snappy sniping comes in clutch later when she can keep up the energy for a longer amount of time. If you run Pam's healing build and drop her turret and immediately gadget, all friendly brawlers within the turret's range will heal over 5,300 health in about 2 seconds. This is because the turret doesn't wait a second to do the first heal, so we can count the first 3 heals plus the gadget's healing strength. Frank's irresistible attraction gadget and his star power's abilities do stack, which allows him to deal insanely high damage. His 2,480 damage can turn into 7,440 damage if he makes the right moves. If you get its max value, one BB bubble can hit the same enemy 9 times, totaling 16,200 damage. As you can imagine, that can pretty much one-shot anyone. If you get these charge attack to land with just the damage gear, she can deal 4,600 damage, which is enough to one-shot Tick, Base 4 Meg, and after the balance changes, Piper. If you are using Nanny's Tempered Steel star power, this turns her 4,800 HP into 24,000 HP. That's a huge difference, but always make sure the enemy can't knock you back. Here's a side-by-side -side 6 seconds of Edgar with and without his hypercharge. As you can see, the additional damage he can deal is relatively high. Despite saying the words up to 15%, Griff's Business Resilience Star Power will always restore 15% of his missing health in standard conditions. This number won't heal below 10 HP either, in case he happens to be missing a very small amount of health. If you combine a perfect X-Factor attack with the gadget and the damage gear, Grom can deal 9,507 damage in one attack. As you can imagine, this can one-shot many brawlers. Bonnie's Wisdom Tooth star power is reportedly awful, but did you know that if you use it perfectly, you can actually fill your entire super in just two attacks? Just don't expect this to happen though, because I struggled to do this in the training cave swarm. This was also recorded before her balance change, so as you can imagine, this might actually be just a bit easier. If you play it carefully, you can actually send enemies over thin walls and obstacles with Gale's Twister gadget. If you ever get the opportunity, it really doesn't hurt to just try. With Colette's hypercharge, the weird Weird little spirit thing will not only do damage, but also charge Colette's super. This means that you can fully recharge her super if it makes full contact. This can make her a really annoying opponent in Heist. If you stand still and place all three or four of Belle's nest egg gadgets, you can surprise the enemy with just a little bit more of instant damage and they will all go off at the exact same moment. It's a fun evil surprise, but you can only do it once. If you use Ash's first bash star power and wait to attack with full ammo twice, you can actually maximize the benefits from his rage in just those two attacks. Just make sure you hit both of them within reasonable time. Lola's three full attacks with nothing helping her only do 9,360 damage. But when you add the damage gear, improvise, and her ego, the damage will shoot all the way up to 23,334 damage. Directly after throwing your knuckle busters, you can actually get a pretty nice speed boost as Sam. This can allow you to catch up to an enemy and pick the gloves back up to deal some major damage. Using just 8 bits damage booster, Mandy can deal up to 7,500 damage with one super. This is enough to one shot a large amount of brawlers. Thanks to gadgets and star powers, Maisie is one of the only brawlers who can stun, slow, and knock enemies back. This is a great ability to take advantage of, especially considering her large inability to auto him. Hank's super does 15,840 damage if all projectiles hit. This can be brutal. If you manage to hit everything on an enemy, the only survivor would be Frank with the shield gear and the sponge star power and oh. If he manages to do that, the super will just be ready again anyways, so... When Pearl's cookie heat meter thing is full, you've noticed that her attacks do quite a bit more damage. But did you know that the filling the meter increases her damage by exactly 75%? That is a large buff. Patience is surely rewarded. Larry and Lori was, or what, were released, were released strong. You know that, right? Well, did you know that they already got 11 nerfs and they're still OP? Crazy, isn't it? If Angela lends multiple poison attacks on the same brawler, the poison damage will only count for the latest hit he had on them. That means that if you tap an enemy after hitting them with a fully charged shot, you'll lose damage potential. When you play Mortis, you actually don't need to trickshot in Brawl Ball. 
every time you you get the ball i feel like you should know this by now but like a lot of people just don't so if tara is using black portal her gadget and the pet power gear the four shadows can take down the entire safe and 27 joint attacks remember they have a very quick fire rate so this can happen pretty fast also the gear only increases the damage of the shadow thing from her super and not the gadget ones when playing gene you can attack and use vengeful spirits while pulling enemies in with a super while they cannot do that themselves this is generally very useful if you use max's sneaky sneakers gadget it surely does restore all lost health after the gadget expires, but this is not the case if you are defeated before the gadget ends. Use that as advice and understand that you are not invincible while this gadget is active. Here's both of Mr. P's gadgets side by side with one porter from his home base. If you want to do faster damage, I'd suggest using Porter Reinforcements. If you manage to get multiple Sprout Supers on the ground at once, and then use the Transplant Gadget, Sprout just destroys all of them, and he restores his one Super back. And no, that next Super is unfortunately not massive. Thanks to Shot in the Arm, Byron is the only brawler who has a gadget that requires ammo to be used, and considering that he has a somewhat slow reload speed, do be cautious when you unload all of your ammo too fast, because you might just not be able to heal yourself. When you're using Squeak's windup gadget, there sometimes exists the chance that the projectile strays away from the location that it was aimed. In other words, if you aim it very close to a wall, the sticky ball might attach to the wall which can be pretty painful to deal with in matches. Lou's attack fills his freeze meter by 15.7%, which makes it take 7 attacks to fully freeze an enemy if the meter isn't depleted. With his super, it takes exactly 8 seconds to freeze an enemy, but that is reduced to just 6 seconds if he's using the star power. But then this all becomes irrelevant once he gets his hypercharge. Ruffs is the only brawler who can increase the maximum HP of his teammates. That is a very powerful trait and it should not be skimmed over. Use it. With nothing but the little ring around Buzz, it takes him 15 seconds to fill his super from just one enemy, or 60 seconds to entirely fill a hypercharge. If you are ever in the spot where you really need to do so, you can use Fang's hypercharge to go through the exterior map area in Brawl Ball from the goal to the other corners of the map. You know that motherly love gadget that always gets hated on? Well, at max level and with Eve's mythic gear, it can heal Eve and her allies a total of 8,000 health if it's used properly and I just don't know of any other gadget with such a great potential. No matter what, you cannot auto aim a long range Janet attack, which would therefore mean that bots can actually aim their attacks, as in this clip the Janet bot unleashes a long range attack. This is how it works, right? If you carefully place four supers in the same spot on the ground with Otis's gadget, and then use this star power, you can actually deal a total of 10,880 damage. Imagine stepping on that trap. When you attack an enemy up close as Buster, not only does it deal exactly twice as much damage, but it also fills a super exactly twice as much. And oh, his reflected attacks just don't help him get another super. Although Gray's Super does not let you aim in any location that is below its maximum range, this law can actually be defied if you auto-aim a Super. But why would you want a portal that goes nowhere? RT's legs seem to have a 29% shield one split, or a 50% shield while he has the recording star power active while RT's shield is just 20%. Either way, this build, with both of their shields considered, turns their total health into 25,350 health, which doesn't expire unless RT uses another Super, and this might just make RT one of the tank brawlers ever. Just don't forget, if one dies, you all die. Willow can actually mind control an enemy while they're being protected by respawn immunity. In the right scenario, this can keep them from staying alive and really punish them. With Dog, you can actually throw the glizzy at your teammates. I'm not even kidding. You should try it. Seriously. Remember that thing I showed you about the Fang hypercharge? Well, if you manage to actually be playing Chuck in Brawl Ball, you can also do the same thing while using this ghost train gadget. I doubt that will ever be needed in a real game, but come on, it's doable. If you combine Charlie and Hank, you can just make enemies disappear. Charlie's super will be able to set Hank up to stand perfectly on top of them to deal a lot of damage in an instant. If you are playing ranked and the modifier is quick fire, your ammo will not restore after landing a Miko attack. After all, Supercell still does need to have some players, because, you know, like everyone would quit otherwise. If you want to maximize the amount of times a single melody note can hit the same enemy, run around them in a counterclockwise fashion while the notes are spinning around you. This can increase the total contacts by as much as 50%. Mind you, this is with neither of the star powers active. With nothing but his hypercharge, Spike can deal a total of 29,400 damage in just 3 attacks. Quite frankly, that's insane. If Crow uses hypercharge in this layout, he can deal this much damage. 
Honestly, this is getting unreal. Who survives this? At their maximum range, Leon Spinner Blades deal 384 damage, or exactly 40% of the possible 960 damage. This also applies to his supercharge. Sandy is the only brawler who can just fully restore his health with the gadget. Surely it's possible with a few others, but Sandy is the only one that has it guaranteed. Amber is like the only brawler who can restore her attack, health, and super all at once. This can come in really handy. This is what Meg's voice sounds like. Hey, wait for me! If Surge uses to the max, he can completely fill his super in just two attacks if they all hit an enemy, or even just one attack if he's at his fourth stage. It's even doable off of one enemy if he lines everything up really well. Here's the difference in total damage of 12 Chester attacks with and without the good star power. Honestly, why is Sneak Peek still a thing? Cordelius's attack range matches that of the supercharged ring around him. Granted, most Cordy players are already aware of that, but I just find it pretty cool. If you use Kit's box gadget and stand still the entire time, it will fill up half of his super. I mean, I, I guess that's pretty good. Anyways, there is 78 useful facts. Hope you all enjoyed.